Why would a child and public health professional like me be so concerned by Adani's proposed mega coal mine in Queensland? Should Queenslanders who are worried about employment get angry with doctors from interstate telling them what's best? While the community may think that doctors just look after sick patients, there is a long and successful history of medical advocacy to improve the health of the whole community. We care deeply about the health, well-being and employment of all Australians. Coal projects like Adani's damage people's health and cause tragic and avoidable deaths. Climate change is already recognized as the world's biggest public health threat, which is why the Lancet Medical Journal earlier this year condemned Adani's mine as a public health disaster. Yet, still no independent health assessments of the mine have been conducted. Meanwhile, the public benefit that $1 billion of taxpayer funding would bring to Australians if invested in things like Aboriginal early childhood support, health, education and clean energy, outweighs any jobs benefit that would flow from potential funding the billionaire coal miners would get. At more than five times the size of Sydney Harbour, Adani's mine would be the largest in Australia and one of the largest in the world. The project includes six open-cut and five underground mines spanning 30 kilometres. The pits would be dug on the land of the Wangan and Jagalingau, whose opposition to the mine has been clear and constant from the outset. For every year of its 60-year lifespan, Adani's project would produce almost as much carbon pollution as all of Australia's current coal-fired power stations combined, fueling further dangerous climate change. Left unchecked, climate change threatens to undermine the last half-century of global health gains. Extreme weather, increased spread of disease, and ecosystem damage all harm people's health, destabilize social systems, and contribute to rising death rates. Climate change is estimated to cause 400,000 deaths each year, most of those in the developing world. Already, the increased deaths and illnesses from serious heat waves in Australia's major urban centres over the last five years outnumber those caused by wildfires, which are also increasing as each year breaks temperature records. Aside from the climate change that coal fuels, pollution associated with the mining and burning of coal has profoundly harmful effects on human health. Air pollution from burning coal in Australia causes respiratory and cardiac diseases and is responsible for over 3,000 deaths each year, more than Australia's annual road toll. In India, where Adani's coal would be burnt, air pollution from burning coal kills 115,000 Indians every year, including 10,000 children under the age of 5, costing the country $4.6 billion annually. Globally, 7 million people die each year from air pollution, to which coal is a major contributor. Earlier this month, Delhi became the most polluted city on Earth, as air quality reached terrifying levels. Breathing the air was like smoking 50 cigarettes in a day. Hospitals witnessed a 20% spike in patients with pollution-related illnesses, and doctors declared a public health emergency. Visibility was so bad that car accidents blocked up highways, and trains and flights were delayed and cancelled. Idani's coal would only make this worse, and unnecessarily so when renewable energy can leapfrog this tragedy. In addition to the health impacts of Adani's coal and the dangerous climate change it will inflict, Adani has a deeply disturbing record of workplace health and safety cholera outbreaks among workers forced to live in crowded, unsanitary conditions and several incidents of deaths. It is clear that Adani cannot be trusted with anyone's health or well-being. The 1,464 jobs that the mine would create is no justification for the thousands of lives that would be devastated by it, especially when thousands more jobs could be created in sustainable sectors that don't put people at risk. If our politicians are serious about a sustainable and prosperous future for the people they were elected to represent, they must say no to Adani and buckle up for the important work of transitioning Australia beyond extractive, harmful industries like coal and gas. The majority of Australians do not want a Donny's mine and they don't want their hard-earned money funding a billionaire coal miner. What the majority of Australians do want is action on climate change and investment in health, education and clean energy projects that will contribute to a safe and healthy future. With the stakes so high and public opinion so clear, it is unconscionable for any politician or investor to support any new coal project, especially a Donny's. I stand with the countless health professionals here in Australia and around the world who are committed to doing what it takes to stop Adani and move Australia beyond coal. Our health and well-being depends upon it. Professor Fiona Stanley is Distinguished Research Professor at the University of Western Australia's School of Medicine and Founding Director and Patron of the Telethin Kids Institute. She was named Australian of the Year in 2003 and 2006. She was made UNICEF Australian Ambassador for Early Childhood Development.